Uh, this is not my clip. It's from uh, the Zach and Matt show, who I'm subscribed to. God bless them, because I wouldn't have known he was on Dr. Oz. I thought he was on on Monday or Tuesday, but uh, I ended up forgetting because it's been a long week at my job. <laughs> so let's see. promising to give $1,000 a month to every American adult, no strings attached. You like that, don't you? You're excited. Entrepreneur and Democratic candidate Andrew Yang is here for a campaign checkup to share what he thinks is the real future of medicine. Please welcome Democratic candidate for president, Andrew Yang. <laughs> announcement, Andrew just raised $10 million for this campaign. Right, thank you. Exceeded a lot of people's expectations. I mean, this could actually happen. What, what is oh, the path, happening. What is the path <laughs> of you beating the candidates who are leading the pack right now? Well, the great thing is most Americans are just tuning in uh, to the 2020 election now. I think there was one poll that said literally only 10% had decided and 90% had not. So our campaign is growing just as Americans are tuning in, and what we're saying is making sense to the American people, that we need to build an economy that actually works for us. So I see you crowd surfing like you almost did with my audience there. I see you. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I used you were. <laughs> this is you. There you are crowd surfing. But the best part was this dance, and he's got some moves. How do you keep your energy up? What is your health regime when you're on the road? Because you don't get to eat at home and pick your meals and cherry pick your beds and all the things most of us get to do. Uh, the toughest part about running for president is definitely being away from your family because I've, I've got two young uh, children at home. But I'd say second or third would be trying to stay healthy on the road. And we have a mutual friend, Daniel Lubetsky, who uh, talked about how he had a hard time finding healthy food on the road. This, so. is, a, yeah, this is a guy who found the Kind Bars, by the way. Any of you like the, the Kind Bars? So I have to say, uh, I owe Daniel a great debt because I must live on Kind Bars on the channel. I probably <laughs> eat like half a dozen a day. Oh, my Thank God. you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the Democratic candidates are considering releasing their medical records. I, I, are you, you're young and seem no, healthy. Are you generally healthy? I am generally healthy, yes. So why would you not want to release your records and just get ahead of everybody else? What's the thought behind that? Uh, I, I mean, well, we'll release my medical records uh, very shortly. In part, right now, we don't want to make it a political issue. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I think that Americans right now are increasingly sensitive to the health of our candidates, and that's probably a good conversation for us to have. Uh, you mentioned your your family a second ago. Your older son is autistic I'm on the spectrum. Yes. And you've talked about that publicly, which I commend you for doing because it's a challenge for so many families right now. What are the resources that you might be able to help families who have children with special needs obtain, especially if they have autism spectrum children? I talk to parents around the country, and their struggles are heartbreaking very often where uh, they have a hard time figuring out that their child is on the autism spectrum and then after they realize that they have a hard time getting resources from their school district. So in my mind, we have to federalize that set of resources and make it so that parents aren't on their own on an island fighting with school districts for resources that the school district uh, may or may not have available for kids on the spectrum. Let's take a step back. To me, being neurologically atypical is the new normal. Uh, and we need to start recognizing that in our, uh, in our society. But you just take the, the, the sort of the big package of health care. You, you spend a lot of time studying our health care system. What is the number one challenge you feel we have that you could fix if you were president? The number one challenge we have is an incentive problem, which is that our system is designed to maximize revenue and activity and not necessarily our health. And this isn't to say that doctors aren't, don't do great work every day because they do, uh, but unfortunately, Right now, uh, they wait until you're unwell, you show up, and they do something mm -hmm. to, to fix you. And if there was a way that we could prevent you from getting to a point where you needed that operation or uh, that doctor's visit, then that would be an enormous win for society. But the incentives right now are not there. So how do you adjust that incentive? What, what can you, what's actually doable? Well, we have some pilots in what's called... Uh, value-added medicine where people are trying to identify what actually keeps us healthier. And so if we can tie the incentives to community healthfulness and people 
thing out of the doctor's office, and that's a win. And that sounds far-fetched, but we can do that. This is one reason why I believe you do need uh, public uh, health care, because the government is better able to adjust the incentives in a way that the market right now will not. So would you be in favor of Medicare for all? I am for a public option that's available to all Americans, but I would not do away with private insurance. So I'll brag on the fact that you were in the technology sector. Yes. And you were successful in that space. So there are some fantastic programs out there like Microsoft, ShareCare, uh, uh, even Amazon have programs now that could dramatically change the efficiency and improve the quality of health care. How does the government support these initiatives, which I think ultimately will provide a coach in our hands, but only if all of us join up? Yes, and only if the incentives are there. So first I want to go towards the negative. Uh, right now we have a uh, mental health crisis in this country, particularly among teenage girls, and that's tied to technology, where right now smartphone use and social media apps are, are actually directly tied to an increase in anxiety and depression among teenagers. So this is something, to me, that's uh, in a health care issue that we need to attack immediately. That's the negative. What's the plus? So the plus. <laughs> On the plus around technology, and, and you've worked in this space, so number one, telemedicine can help make uh, health care available to rural areas and places that right now live in primary care deserts, and unfortunately, that's a lot of the country. Number two, artificial intelligence and other software tools can improve diagnostics to a very, very high level, and in some instances, they've even outperformed human physicians in terms of being able to identify, for example, uh, tumors on a film. All right, we covered health care, but when we come back, we talk about your buzziest promise of all, one that got an applause earlier, $1,000 a month to every well by actually every American adult. Period. Every American adult, that's right. How do you think it's going to make you healthier? Take a you'll find out. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. My coworkers. Usually YouTube has the skip it button, but I can't see it. <laughs> My camera's in the way. Oh. This sucks. Oh, a great debt, because I'm a... I think it's going to make you healthier. Stick around, you'll find out. Months to every adult in this country. I mean, how is that going to improve their health? How will it not improve their health? <laughs> That's hard to ask. If you think about $1,000 a month means in, in the hands of Americans right now, it would mean healthier food, it would mean lower stress levels, it would mean more time spent with your kids, and we know we would use that money to make our families stronger and healthier. And it actually makes perfect sense when you think about it. If you imagine a society where all of us were getting $1,000 a month as a right of citizenship, then you would be able to breathe easier and positive social indicators would go up, negative social indicators, including health, would go, uh, go down. What does this math button mean? It's obviously not arithmetic. Yeah, so it stands for Make America Think Harder, which is what we need to do Woo! right now. <laughs> it's also the case that uh, also one of our, our big uh, campaign taglines is the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Come on over here. Let's do a little math. Challenge for you, right? So my, some of my favorite foods out there, I know you eat healthy, right? The question here is how many of these products could you buy for $1,000? Are you ready? Oh right. my gosh, this how, is fun. <laughs> how many punches of kale for 1000 bucks? Yell it out, what do you think? 493, someone said? We have a very smart audience, I should tell you. They seem very smart. I'm going to say 250. That's half, but close. 500. Oh, no. I said trust the woman. She yelled out the right answer. I do need to trust you. All right. We're going to do this again. How many, my favorite snack is, oh, what's your way? I love nuts. What do you eat? Do you eat? Almonds. A lot of almonds. Almonds. That's why you like the kind bars. Yes. I get the almond-based kind bars. You, you ever soak them in water? The kind bars? Yes. No, no. This is nuts. <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't done. Does that improve them? Soak your nuts in water. It really matters. <laughs> right. Well, he's a doctor. How, 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 many, how many pounds of walnuts for $1,000? What do you think, audience? Show it to him, guys. 150. 140 pounds? Yes! You got that one. All right. <laughs> I did some math. He's good at math. And finally, for all the marbles, all the marbles, how, how 
many bottles of apple cider vinegar, which is the most common home remedy offered right now for $1,000? Oh, my gosh. How much is apple cider vinegar in a bottle? Audience, help them out, Al. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's $8, and it's 120 bottles. He got it right again. I'll toast you. It's 130 bottles. That's pretty good. You are a very good mathematician. Toast. Mm. It has been a pleasure having you on. He's healthier already. Thank you, wonderful candidate. Pay attention to some of the things he's saying. Listen, the vote is up to you. It's the power of change. It's the power of you. One person with one voice speaking the truth. So look around, be someone you love, and vote for them. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, that made my day. Uh, made me smile, too. Um, if you're near the San Fernando Valley, please be careful. There's fire again. I got a friend living in Glendale, and she's smelling the heat out there, so. And I can see smoke from here, too, so be careful. This made me smile. Uh, oh, made my, the rest of the day better. <laughs> For sure. See you later.